yeah, the project started actually when um, I was doing a lot of flying. And this was actually when my mom was sick. So like uh, I was living in SF and working there, but then she was in San Diego. So I'd fly back and forth a lot because, you know, I was visiting her and stuff and she'd periodically be in the hospital and then come home and be more okay. And then anyway, so I'd have, I was traveling a lot at the time. And um, like, I'd always known about California development right because it's sort of all around us it's a really populous state and um san diego uh like i'm from san diego east county so it was like arguably like more rural like in my youth and then there's just been lots of development in the past like 15 20 years mm -hmm. so um anyway like i would fly over the city and just notice like all of the human patterns in the landscape and then flying you know basically across like half of california too right. and just sort of seeing like from the air like all these really abstract patterns and like it just made me think a lot about how um you know how like we see other animals like making their sort of like hive or whatever you know right. it's like you know you see the bee and they have like the really intricate honeycomb and like the coral reef you know there's all these little like microorganisms like making these giant structures and I was just sort of thinking like wow you know humans uh really impact the earth so much and we we sort of like you know embroider if you will like these mm -hmm. really like intricate kind of bizarre looking patterns like onto yeah. the landscape so that's sort of where it came from and then um also I was just doing a lot of embroidering at the time and like my mom was teaching me how to sew so it kind of like all just sort of came together into this project. I find reference images for everything. Um, and then I generally lay out the roads and like the main roads first to get a rough outline of where everything is gonna go. Cause I do really like to make them accurate. I My goal is that everyone could find their own house. Although I do admit that they're not always completely perfect, but um, that's, it's art, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not a, a city planner, so. I lay out the main roads and I do that in pencil. And then I go through and I embroider those roads because sometimes the pencil actually will rub off. So it's important to make it permanently in there and map out everything. And after that, I go in and I add the houses and I try to make, um, I try to just make reference marks to make sure that I have um, the right amount. Because if I make the houses too big or too small, then it's, um, gets funky. I use sort of a weird modified um, backstitch, I guess. So my primary goal is to not use too much thread. So I like to conserve thread as much as possible, just selfishly so I don't have to buy as much but um but also it's good to just you know save your resources if you can so I do one stitch forward and then I will do uh one stitch um back um it's pretty labor intensive like um that was just this small section of houses right here so 79 houses at uh, roughly nine stitches per house was 711 stitches. And that's not counting the roads around them either.
colors sort of shift from light to dark. So that's just been something I've been experimenting with. So it gives it more dimension. Um, they don't really reference any meaning other than just aesthetics, but um, it's sort of been a goal to make them gradually shift from dark to light uh, to give it just a dimensional quality. But the blue is the blue itself is intentional because it's supposed to be similar to blueprints and things like that from like the engineering uh, aspect of the whole project. Also, yeah, when you embroider, you use a lot of thread and um, it can be <laughs> it can be tricky to kind of keep track of the exact color you're using because there's a lot of just variations of the same one. So they do have the numbers of the color um, on this little wrapper so you can identify what it is uh, and make sure you get the same one. But um, it is like just for me, I do like to conserve as much thread as I possibly can, just to make sure I have all of the stuff that I bought at once that I know is the same together. Um, so that's just another reason why I like to, um, I like to save thread and, and I don't know, try to use as little as I possibly can. to choose uh, subdivisions, particularly in California, because that's where I have a lot of experience. Just I've lived here my whole life and um, I've seen a lot of development in this area. So I like to focus on what I know and um, focus on the areas around here that I find interesting. And I definitely look for interesting geometry because sometimes there's just these really intricate bizarre patterns that come out of of subdivisions that you might not really see from the ground mm -hmm. and um, it's just such a strange like interesting vantage point to look at them um, from like satellite views and from uh, google maps and i do a lot of searching via google maps um, and then i'll also use historical images from Actually, it's Google Earth allows you to go back in time. So sometimes I'll go back to like pre-development and just sort of like see the stages. Um, and I've done some paintings of that, but the embroideries are mostly of uh, contemporary subdivisions um, that have those interesting shapes and uh, patterns and things like that. I've made a lot of embroideries of Palm Springs and there's definitely a little bit more there than just the visual patterns that I find like really striking. And um, what's so weird about that, or just interesting is about that place is that um, it's so starkly different from its environment. Like the, the subdivisions and the development there really is strikingly different than the natural habitat because it's a, it's a total desert and um, the amount of development in that area is completely staggering and all of the green golf courses are just so out of place and it really makes me think about uh, sustainability and sort of how we do find our or we do view ourselves as being separate from ecosystems and sort of separate from nature and, and the environment um, by creating these things that are so out of place so there's a lot there's some some things like that sometimes that that come into play when i uh when i choose a, a place to embroider or to show in work the way they develop it is in these big blocks so it actually kind of on when I was looking at Google Earth and Google Maps, it actually looked like a quilt already because the developments are in these big stamped 
blocks. It just looks like someone took a stamp and made this this rectangle. Um, it's pretty interesting, and that kind of informed, I think, why I chose that is because it it already looked similar to quilt pieces, how it was like sewn together. I like to be pretty neutral in how I present things um, because I think that it's important for art to bring up conversations and I don't really like to be overly uh, opinionated with what I create. I just kind of like to present ideas and then see how people interpret them, um, but not make the interpretation like inside the work itself. So it's interesting because people respond a lot of different ways to these. I've heard a lot of people be really negative about development and um, looking at it as a sustainability thing, especially the ones about Palm Springs. I think it was 2017 or 16. Um, there's this gallery in San Francisco, uh, Merchants of Reality, that's unfortunately not there anymore. But um, I had a lot of these up in the gallery and there was a big quilt uh, that was called Home Sweet Homes. And it was supposed to be a tongue in cheek name, actually. I was feeling a little bit tongue in cheek about it, but it was actually really interesting because um, someone I know who was really into sustainability and, and pretty against suburban uh, layouts of cities because it's very like wasteful of fossil fuels, it's car based, it's um, made by big development companies, you know, it's, it, it's, it's all a lot of pre-planned development that's just centered on the car, which is from a sustainability point, it's just really taxing on our planet. Um, and so this is where this person was coming from. But then I titled it this like sassy, well, I don't know, maybe it's not that sassy. I thought it was, but uh, calling it Home Sweet Homes. And then he was looking at it and saying like, oh, wow, this is interesting. Like, maybe it's a good thing. Like, I don't know. He kind of was confused about maybe how to feel because if you really think about it, people live in these places and it is a home for someone and to say, your home is wrong. You know, there's sort of that weird part of it too, where like, you know, we are traffic, like we are that in a way. So it's like, are we wrong for living in a place? I mean, it's, there's just a lot of kind of human questions to ask about that. And um, of course, like I believe we can do better uh, in making our dwellings more sustainable in the future. And that's a goal that I personally have, but um, it's just sort of interesting looking at it from those perspectives and trying to come to some kind of understanding. Mm -hmm.